When declaring a function in C-sharp, you want to give it a return type. In this case, we're using void. Then we can give it a name, change value, and then we can give it a parameter. And let's say inside this function, we want to do x equals 5. Let's try and call this function change value with our number variable. And if we use cw tab tab, we can try and print this number and see what happens in the console. You can see it still says 1. And the reason why it still says 1 is when you just pass in a normal parameter, it passes in by value. And what that means is it will copy the number 1 into this variable and then x will be used as the number 1 replacement. So when you use x equals 5, it's only changing it within here and not changing the original value. So if we do a console write line inside here and we print x, we can see that that indeed does say 5, and then when it returns back to our console write line on line 16, it will say 1, because it's not actually changing this value. But let's say there was a situation where you wanted it to change. We can use something called a ref, and what this means is it will pass it in by reference. When you pass it in by value, it will just copy the value to number 1 into this x variable. When you pass it in by reference, it will find the memory address location that this integer number is stored in memory and it will pass it inside here. So when you actually say x equals 5, what you're doing is you're affecting the memory of the variable that's being passed in. So x equals 5 will actually become number equals 5. So now if we remove this console write line, we also just need to do one little quick change. Now you can see after we've added the ref keyword, we've got an error. Let's see what the error says. Argument 1 must be passed with the ref keyword. So what this means is, when you want to tell the c -sharp compiler that you want to pass something by reference, you have to use the word ref, followed by a space, and then the variable that you want to pass by reference. So now if we try to run the code, you can see what happens. We actually get 5 now. A situation where this might be helpful, let's say we had a string name equals abba. And then let's say we wanted to change that name to something else. So we can have a change name function that I'll create in a second, and we can pass in the name. And let's just print the name after just to make sure it actually happens. So let's say we want to change it from abo to test. Then we can make a new function called static void, change name, ref, string name, and then we want a string new name. And then simply we can say name equals new name. And this should just work very easily. It changed from abo, then abo got passed in as a reference into name. Then now it says abba equals new name, and new name is test, so abba has been replaced by test. What's really helpful is you can almost mimic having two return values in a function by using passing by reference. So what we can do is we can extend this little example. We can say enter a new name, we can have a string new name, make it equal to console.readline. Then instead of passing a static test, we can actually pass a new name. We can make it so we can type in the new name, test with a capital T. There we go, and we can see that works. Now we don't necessarily know if it works, so we can actually extend this function and make it more obvious to tell the programmer what's actually happened and if something has went wrong. But we actually have a return type of void, so what if we change that to a bool? Now we can return true because we know that this line's executed. But you don't necessarily want to change the name if this name is either null or empty. So what we can do, before we assign the name, we can do a check. We can use a string library and say string dot is null or empty. We can pass a new name inside and then open the curly braces. And what we want to say here is if the string is not null or empty, then that means that the new name has something inside it. So we can paste this line straight in the middle. And if this is the case, then we actually want to return true as well. And if this is not the case, then we actually want to do it else here. And then we can take this line and remove it now and say return false. So now we have two distinct paths. The first path, if they've entered something into new name and it's not null or it's empty, then it will assign the name and return back true. So the programmer knows it's actually been successful. If something was went wrong or the name is null or it's an empty quote, then it will return false. So the programmer knows something's went wrong. So now let's change this code to make it adaptable to our new function. So this, as you can see here, will say that it returns a bool, but we're not actually doing anything with it. So what we can do, after we've entered the name and we read it in from the console, we can say if change name, and because this returns a bool, we can place it straight into the if statement. So if the return value of this is true, then we must have changed the name so we can print the name. The new name is plus name. 
And if this else path executes, then we know that it's returned false from down here. So then you know that something's went wrong. Name cannot be null or empty. So let's try and run it now and see what happens. So if it asks us to enter a new name and I just press enter, it says name cannot be null or empty. And if I run it again and type in a real name, test, then it's changed the name to test. So in essence, we've had two kind of return values. We've changed a value of a variable, but also returned something. And if you remember from my previous videos, that's kind of how int try pass works. Instead, what try pass does is it uses the out parameter, which I'll cover in a future video. But they both work very similar. So let's just have a quick recap. At the start, we tried to change this int number using a normal integer parameter, just like this, int x. And we tried to say x equals 5, but what happened is this number didn't actually get changed. The only reason why it didn't get changed is because when we pass in a parameter, then it gets passed in by value. When it gets passed in by value, it then becomes a local variable just inside these two curly braces, and it doesn't extend outside this function. Then we tried using the ref parameter, which will let us declare a new ref variable, and that will actually pass in the memory address location of the variable into this function. So when you do x equals 5, it's actually pointing towards the original variable. So in this case, our number. So when we do ref number, it's actually passing in the number variable as a reference. So then when we execute this function and x equals 5 runs, then it will actually change the value to 5. And it got validated when we printed it out in the console like this. We built a little program just to change your name. So we read in a value from the console and then we call the function called change name, which takes in a reference to our name variable and a new name variable that we loaded in from the console. If this function returns back true, then we'll know that the code's executed and the name has been changed. If it returns back false, then we know something's went wrong. In this case, the user has typed in nothing. So let's have a look at the function. It's declared as a bool. It's called change name with a ref string name and a string new name. And the first thing we do is to check if it's not null or empty. And this is for the user inputted value new name. And if it's not null or empty, then we can assign the name to new name and return back true. If something goes wrong and they've entered an empty string or the string happens to be null, then we will return false. This will get processed in our if statement and then the code will decide whether it goes into this path or into this path. If you have any questions, drop them below. I'm happy to answer any problems you may have. I'm currently creating my C-Sharp course, which covers tutorials, tasks, exercises, and big projects to ensure you get the best learning from my course. I'll be providing discounts for subscribers and Patreons on the channel. If this interests you, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.